Okay, so let's prove some of these trig identities now. I'm giving you a little list here of helpful hints. First one is put everything in terms of sine and cosine. That is a really useful thing because all of these trig ratios can be put in terms of sine and cosine. And it's better to compare apples to apples. Write as a single fraction. Factor, obviously factor is very important because in a fraction you can only cancel out the factors. So factoring is going to be important to us. Simplify rather than complicate most times. Work on either or both sides independently of each other. Uh, this is not a suggestion. This is something that you have to do. That's why we split it up into a left side and a right side here. You need to know your identities and you need to do something. It is not going to prove itself. You are very rarely going to look at one of these trig identities and, and know from the beginning exactly what order you're going to do things. Take this trig identity, for example. It is highly unlikely that you guys are going to look at this and say, well, duh, obviously 1 minus sine squared theta over 1 minus cos theta is equal to negative 1 over sec theta. Which reminds me, when you're doing a proof like this and you're trying to get these two sides to be the same, you can't just write underneath here negative 1 over sec theta and say, oh, well, I did everything in my head. This is the same as this. Left side is equal to right side. It doesn't work that way. You have to always show your steps right here. We are never going to give you a proof that cannot be done. It will always be true that this is equal to this. So we know that these two things are going to be the same. This is not the solution. The solution is not negative 1 over sec theta equal negative 1 over sec theta. The solution is all the stuff you do leading up to that point. All right, so let's look at this trig identity here and look at our helpful hints and see if we can get the left side and right side to look the same. So put in terms of sine and cosine. Left side is already in terms of sine and cosine. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so this is going to be negative cosine theta. All right, they don't look very similar yet. Write as a single fraction. Okay, I can do that. I just got to get these denominators the same. So this will be 1 minus cos theta over 1 minus cos theta. That's my 1. Minus sine squared theta over 1 minus cos theta. And now that they have the same denominator, I can write this as 1 minus cos theta minus sine squared theta over 1 minus cos theta. Theta. Now it looks more complicated now, but this is all moving towards simplifying it, writing it as a single fraction. I have now written as a single fraction, put in terms of sine and cosine, factor. I don't see anything I can factor here. Simplify, that's what I'm in the process of trying to do here. Work on either side or both sides independently. Yep, I worked on the right side a bit. I worked on the left side a bit. Know my identities. One of the positive things right now as you guys know very few identities that's going to be useful because you only know nine or ten identities at this point so there's not a whole lot of things you can do uh sine squared i can do something with sine squared let's see we're going to make this sine squared into one minus cos squared theta over one minus cos theta this is looking worse and worse let's see what else i can do here so 1 minus 1, those will disappear, and I get a negative cos theta and a positive cos squared theta over 1 minus cos theta. Oh, so now I can factor. Great. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull a negative cosine theta out of the top, which is good because my right side says negative cos theta. That's probably going to be useful. 1 minus cos theta. There we go. And on the bottom, 1 minus cos theta. And now I can cancel those. And my left side says negative cosine theta. So I can write left side equal right side. It is very satisfying to finish one of these proofs. So now we write QED, which stands for quad erat demonstratum, which is Latin for how you like me now, proof. That's actually not what it means. It has something to do with being done. I've seen a lot of really smart people use it at the end of proofs, so that's what we're going to do. So let's try another one. That one wasn't too bad in the end. Let's try one that looks like this. This one seems more complex. Okay, 
So let's start by turning things in terms of sine and cosine. These are my ratio identities, so I'm going to make cotangent cos theta over sine theta minus sine theta over cos theta all over sine theta cos theta. Right side is going to be 1 over sine squared theta minus 1 over cos squared theta. Okay, put in terms of sine and cosine, check. Write as a single fraction. Let me try writing that as a single fraction. That is going to need sine theta cos theta. That's my denominator. But of these two fractions, it is also going to have a denominator of sine cos. So sine theta cos theta. That's the common denominator for this big numerator here. That's going to make this cos squared theta. That's going to make this minus sine squared theta. And then what I'm going to do is dividing by sine over cos is multiplying by 1 over sine cos. Or if you'd rather, we could just multiply by sine theta cos theta on top and bottom. So I don't have denominators in my numerator and it gets all very confusing. So that's going to cancel that bit out. That's the reason I'm doing that. And that's going to leave me with cos squared theta minus sine squared theta in the numerator. Denominator is going to be sine theta cos theta times sine theta cos theta, which is sine squared theta cos squared theta. And then I can just split this into two different fractions now because I can see that these are going to cancel. And when I split them up, and actually I'll take the step, cos squared theta over this denominator, sine squared theta cos squared theta, minus sine squared theta over that same denominator. And now my cos squareds will cancel, and that leaves me with 1 minus sine squared theta, which is looking promising. Okay, and let's take a look at this. Sine squares cancel and leave me with 1 over cos squared theta. Left side equal right side QED. Nice work. Sir, I, I, I know you told us never to ask um, when are we going to use this, but I, I really don't understand the purpose of all of this. Oh, trig identities are very, very important, my short-sighted young friend. See, proving trig identities is a metaphor for life. You know where you are. Here. You know where you're trying to go. There. Now you need to figure out how to use the tools that you have, in this case the trig identities, to get you from here to there. This is exactly like life. This is very important for you young people. Life works this way. You know where you are. You know where you want to go, most of you do anyway. Now you have to figure out how to use the tools that you have. Brains, education, charm, whatever other strengths you might have to get where you want to be. See, just like Bruce. Okay, good answer, sir. Thank you, that was very enlightening. No problem. Don't ever underestimate the importance of your ability to problem solve. Now back to this proof. There are many ways to do a proof much like in life, there are many ways to reach a goal. Let's back the proof up to about here. Let's say we get to this point right here. And, and you don't remember how to add fractions. This whole uh, getting the denominators the same, it's all very confusing. Now dividing, that's something I can do. So I'm going to divide by sine over cos. Well, I know that cos theta over sine theta minus sine theta over cos theta divided by sine cos is the same thing as multiplying by 1 over sine cos. And there I don't have to do all that silly adding fraction stuff. Now when I get to this point, I just distribute. And when I multiply this fraction times this fraction, the cosines will cancel out. And that's going to leave me with 1 over sine squared theta. And then when I multiply this fraction by this fraction, the signs will cancel out. 
and that's going to leave me with 1 over pro squared theta. And we pick our heads up and we look, and the left side and the right side are equal again. And we're done with our proof. That's a second option we could do. Okay, let's back it up to this spot again, where we got stuck with the addition. And let's say we get stuck with the addition and with the division. So if you look at your helpful hints, it says simplify rather than complicate. Nine times out of ten, you're going to be much better off taking this complex expression right here and trying to simplify it to make it look like the right side. Okay, But if you got completely stuck on the left, you could complicate the right to make it look the same. Okay, If you look at the right side right now, it is missing a denominator of sine theta cos theta. Just give it that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to make this a giant fraction over 1, and then what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by sine theta cos theta on the bottom. And of course if we do it there, we're also going to have to do it here on the top, sine theta cos theta. And just like that, I now have a denominator that is sine theta cos theta, which is exactly what I was looking for on the left side. Because don't forget, you can work on either or both sides so long as you're doing it independently of each other. Okay, things are looking good. Denominator's the same. Let's see what this numerator is going to look like now. Okay, when I multiply this sine cos times that, that sine is going to cancel with one of those signs, and it's going to leave me a cos theta on the top, and it's going to leave me with a sine theta on the bottom. And then over on this side, cos theta is going to cancel with one of these coses on the bottom, and it's going to leave me with a sine theta in the numerator, and it's going to leave me with a cos theta in the denominator. And just like that, once again, we got the left side equal the right side by complicating things instead of simplifying. Q, E, D. So there are many, many different ways to do one of these trig identities. But as long as you're following the basic math rules and you don't make any careless mistakes along the way, you should get there eventually. Keep in mind, if you make a careless mistake, you're going to be working on that proof for a very, very long time. Because it's hard to prove something that's not true. Now go do some practice. Enrich your life with trigonometric identities.